Hey guys, are you here? Welcome to part two on basics of box cutter and hard ups. In previous part, we were talking about the most essential operations, and in this one, we're going to be focusing more on you know the fun stuff. Well, let's talk about cutters first, yeah, uh, because you know that's something you're going to be using all the time. So when you draw a cutter, when you click and drag a mouse and you know release and then draw a cutter. Um, you will draw the basic boolean, which is the difference boolean. But when you press X during this operation, you will switch to slash. If you press X again, you will switch to intersect. And then if you press one more time, you will switch to inset. So now when you press uh, T during uh, any of these operations, it's going to switch to solidify. In the inset mode, it's going to be basically adjusting the thickness of this uh, inset bit. But if you switch back to cutter mode with X, uh, the T is going to be adjusting the solidification. Okay. Now, let's cancel it with right mouse button and let's draw it again. So now, if I draw a cutter, right, and I press Shift T, I'm going to switch to taper. Okay. So you can draw taper cuts, all right. And if I press W during the cut, I'm going to switch to wedge cut mode. Now, if you hold control while doing this, you will switch to a perfect wedge, which is basically a 45 degree uh, wedge cut. So if I'm going to apply a bevel here, you'll see we're going to have a perfect wedge. Now, when you draw a wedge cut, you can press W again to uh, rotate it or turn it off. So you can toggle different views here, right? In addition to all this, during the cut, you can press R to rotate, G to move, right, and F to scale, okay, and of course E to extrude. So uh, during the cut, when you when you draw a cut, you can press Tab to enter so-called pose mode, and you can you know manipulate with your mesh. You can hold Shift and pan it. You can click a middle mouse button and rotate it. You can zoom it in and out, uh, and then you can kind of think. Uh, what to do with that mesh but when you press uh, right mouse button you're gonna cancel and when you're gonna press left mouse button you're gonna apply so don't click those if you want to adjust it now these dots here uh, they indicate different things for example this one here if you click it you can add a bevel right or a chamfer so you can uh, you know add either of these uh, this one is gonna be uh, the depth of the cut so extrusion right this one is the uh, overall shape of it, and this one is extrusion from the top. Another thing that you can do with a cutter is add double bevel. So you can um, create a cut, press B for bevel, and then Q for quad bevel. In addition to this, you can press Shift F to create an inverse bevel. All right. Another interesting mode of box cutter is going to be extrusion. So if I'm going to draw a cut around this boolean and drop it down to completely you know encompass this shape and press y and um, this will change the cutter to a black shape and um, black color and if you click you will gonna extrude that cutter what it means is that now if you draw it you have this cutter extruded and this is your uh, custom cutter okay so if i draw it now I'm going to be drawing a custom cutter. Now, if you draw this cutter and you want to maintain the, the same depth and sort of an angle of this original one, you simply hold control, it's going to happen automatically, okay? So let's say I have a cut in here, right? And I created the cutter, so let's just go back to press D and leave that custom cutter, go to regular cut, select the cube, and uh, when I'm going to be cutting this, and let's say I'm going to perform a cut, and then I'll think, well, I actually changed my mind I want this to be a slash cut so what you can do is go here press Q go to ever scroll click on it which will enable you to scroll through all the cutters on the mesh uh, using your mouse scroll wheel then you click right and then you can shift it to another boolean so shift bool and when you scroll your mouse you can shift between all these different modes like for example you know uh, inset press T and then just solidification um, or I keep shifting to let's say uh, slice boolean right which is this one so if that's what you want you can you know you can uh, sw switch it anytime you want as long as the boolean is live okay that important thing to note is that cutters are parented to the mesh so if I move this mesh 
it's going to move with the cutter, right? But in this case, you see that because we have a slush here, we got two different meshes, but they share the same cutter. It's a problem because when I move one of these meshes, the other one gets affected, right? So what you can do is select both of them, go to Q menu, go to operations and click on Uniquify. This will basically create a individual cutter for each of these meshes. So now I can move this mesh with its cutter and I can move this mesh with its cutter. So if I move this one here on the Y axis, and I'm gonna go to F scroll, you can see there's the cutter. And if I do the same thing here, you know, this mesh also has a cutter. So this cutter being duplicated and parented to this mesh, right? In addition to all this, we have different types of cutters, okay? So we have, uh, you know, uh, regular box cuts. So just, you know, box shape cut, right? But we also have um, circle. So if you press D, you can change the circle and you can draw it from a uh, from a center. And if you hold shift and scroll your mouse, you can adjust the number of segments, as you can see it up here and also on the bottom here. And all the other options apply. So for example, you can draw a circular cut with shift T uh, to taper, right? And you can create a taper, tapered cut if you want to. You can um, you can create a um, shift T and then you can press B for bevel, right? Let's just drop it a little bit lower, press B for bevel, and then shift F, shift F to invert it. You can get something like this, which is pretty interesting. And if you drop a, be a bevel on the mesh, you're gonna have a double bevel on uh, on the shape here. You can create different shapes with with the circle. So if you go here, uh, you can switch it to, for example, star. And you can draw a star. And of course, you can change the number of segments if you want to. And you can create, you know, cuts like this if you want, right? And the same principles apply. So I can draw a cut and press Shift T and it's gonna taper it as well. Press B for bevel and you can create a very easy, you know, screw-like shape for instance, right? Which is pretty cool. So now let's talk about angons, right? Angons are really cool, you can do amazing stuff with them. So uh, let's go to D and we're gonna go to an angon cut and I can simply start drawing an angon. And uh, you can see that the angon starts snapping to certain points. Now what does it mean? So when you draw an angon, first of all, you will notice that automatically it stops to angles. The reason why it stops to angles is because by default, you have this angle lock here enabled, okay? If you don't want this angle lock to kick in, you can hold control to release it, right? If you want to switch uh, the uh, angle density or, you know, the increments of uh, angles, uh, to which it's gonna snap you can do it here you can set it to 5 for example by default it's 15 and it's gonna be a little bit more you know precise snap okay so you can create a end gun very easily and let's just draw it and you can see now here it's gonna snap to this dot perfectly creating a 90 degrees angle uh, like that then you can press B of course and you can you know bevel it and you can create a really cool shape shift T and taper it as well so it works with angons as well okay another cool thing that you can do with angon is that uh, you can you can draw a shape like for example a wall with a thickness so if you turn off this cyclic here you can also switch it off in here if you want to um, you can draw an angon with a thickness which you can adjust by pressing t right like that so if i deselect everything and start drawing here you can see that i can start drawing a shape like this I can press T to adjust thickness of it, click, and then I can extrude it like this, press B for bevel, and uh, press Q to remove the Q bevel, the quad bevel, and I got something like that, which is awesome, right? So you can create very quick walls and stuff with it, or, you know, maybe even cutters, because you could use this one as a cutter, so... I watch this uh, i can still change the thickness of it so i can go to operations modifier solidify i can change the solidification of it and i can use it as a cutter if i wanted to so if i you know grab a cube here and make it bigger and grab the shape and make it taller and make it bigger you know i could basically slice it like this right so shift two and boom i got something like this 
so you can you know create really interesting stuff with it okay it's important in which view you are in terms of cutting so if i'm in um perspective view and you, you know you want to draw in an object orientation what it means is that when you press shift v menu you'll be seeing uh, orientation of your cut so object uh, mode means that you will be drawing off of a face so uh, along the normals or the direction of the you know whichever face is pointing at so in this case it's going to be here if i'm going to draw off this face it's going to be like that if i'm going to have a corner here okay i'm going to press shift b to bevel this right and if i'm going to draw from here you know my cutter is going to be oriented accordingly right but i can switch it to view mode and if i do that i usually work in orthographic so i'm going to go to let's say top view orthographic and then when i when i draw i'm going to be drawing in view mode meaning it doesn't matter um you know how i'm oriented i'm going to be always drawing from the view okay if you are drawing on the shape so i'm going to start drawing within the shape parameters I'm drawing an object view, but if I start drawing from outside the shape, I'm drawing in view mode. And this is basically something that's called, I think, um, auto, auto view mode or whatever. It's really cool and convenient because you don't really have to switch between them so often if you don't want to. And another really awesome option here on the object mode is the alignment to, to the edges. Okay, that's really important. So let's say you have a diagonal edge here and, you know, you want it to align uh, yourself to, to, that, to that edge. You can see that it's aligning, but it's aligning to, to, this, to this top edge. So if you press Shift V and switch from local orientation to the nearest edge, now you can actually align yourself to any edge you you know you are close to right or you could align yourself to the longest edge so the longest edge on the mesh basically so it's going to follow the orientation of the longest edge uh, on the mesh right i never use these two i just you know don't really uh, care i use these these two modes 100 percent of the time i literally never use these two so there is one more thing I want to show you, and that's a line cut. Now, in box mode, you can draw either in local orientation, or right, this local orientation here, or nearest edge orientation. But you can also draw in a custom orientation, which is a line box. So if you click on this here or um, here in the menu, so you're going to be in line box orientation. So what you can do is draw a line and snap it like an angle to an angle. And then when you snap it, then release then you can draw uh, a shape and you know you can basically align it to any angle that you want so if you want to misalign your cut this is the best way to do it occasionally you have a problem with aligning your cut to to an edge using uh, this algorithm then line box is perfect because it's you know you can align it perfectly to any really edge uh, on your mesh right when you draw a cut okay and you control the depth of the cut you know you can cut to any depth you want really but if you want to cut through the mesh all you need to do is just draw and click and this is in this is going to en enable something called laser cut which means it's going to cut through the mesh um through, no, through the whole depth of the mesh okay so draw and click draw and click right draw and click you see what i mean so you can draw and adjust it and click or just simply draw and click a lot of people ask me like you know which one should i go with box cutter or hard up so i mean it's you should treat it as a one add-on because they, they work so well together and occasionally i don't even know which tool is you know which add-on because it doesn't really matter it's like one massive add-on for me it's an environment think about it as an environment okay not not two separate add-ons because they just uh, have so many tools that interact with one another you can't really i mean you can use one or the other but it just makes zero sense to me to be honest so the best way to learn them is to, to learn them both at the same time all right so in the next video we're going to be talking about combining both uh, workflows together maybe we're going to be talking about some hard ups tools and how these two add-ons you know work together in tandem all right thanks for watching and uh, see you in the next one